company. How are you doing there? Uh, this is uh, Sunday Sessions. Uh, it's uh, Sunday, uh, 20, 20th of September, 2020. A little bit wobbly at the moment, I'm afraid. I'll tell you a bit later, but let's get started. Hello to everybody. Hello there. Uh, welcome to Sunday Sessions, which is sort of coming to you on a sort of uh, shoestring. <laughs> uh, well, a few things have gone wrong. We got tech issues. A few. We did some tidying up, and through the tidying up, some essential components that I use on Sunday has went missing. So I've pretty much put a reef knot together, and hopefully you are receiving this okay, and uh, we'll get through this. It's the upload is a little bit dodgy, and one of the things is the lighting isn't very good. Things that were missing. Anyway, we'll press on because I think it'll still be a fabulous show for you. And uh, glorious sunny afternoon here, uh, Cara Crory. And um, as usual, this is our weekly time of exploring nature-based folklore, connecting this to your favorite tree or garden sanctuary. And the three pillars, if you recite them after me, the regular people, exploring nature-centered folklore, and uh, applying the folklore mindfully in your favorite sanctuary, in your tree sanctuary or garden sanctuary, and then express your visions through your poetry, your writing, your craft, your problem solving, your vocation. Now, today's Sunday session is for the apples and the upcoming equinox, which is, what is roughly two o'clock in the afternoon uh, tomorrow. And so this is apple folklore and Avalon stories. Now, today's guests and features, uh, we've got some apple poetry from uh, Chandler Nichols again, who's becoming a lovely regular one, and I'm sure you will enjoy this uh, just as much. And uh, we have a, a poem, a Yeats poem set to music, an essential one uh, by Claire Roach. And uh, we got apple theme contributions by Denise Terry, she just sent me uh, pictures of an apple pie she's just made, but unfortunately, due to the tech moment I'm having, I couldn't put it up yet. So we might have a, a nice add-on next week uh, with a bit more Denise. And then I've got a lovely selection, uh, a lovely young lady, because I put out there for, if I can get her up. Um, now, I hope you're getting this. Again, I'm sort of getting... Hang on. I think we've come to a lock here. Are we, are we on? I hope we are on. Anyway, Amelia Fraser uh, Begin, uh, and she did us a lovely step-by-step -step, uh, orchard. She's got an apple orchard, her family have, and it's step-by-step -step harvesting and what she drew after that, which was uh, absolutely lovely. And then a very proud moment for me is the Santos Wilmot family and their apple interpretations. I'm also going to be informing about some um, festivals uh, that are around and uh, apple festivals that are, of course, they're COVID managed as they would have to be. And uh, we this includes a live interview with Lynn uh, Mailer, who I see is in the room uh, waiting to come in. So there's a, a picture for Lynn for now. Uh, and uh, we've got uh, three, so I hope I got the pronunciation right. Uh, Gushibawa, please correct me on that one. Um, let's see, I'm going to try. Hello, Lynn, are you on? Um, I've got to. Hi, Hello, Lynn, John. how are you doing there? Hello, John, can you hear me? Let's see, I'm. Uh... I must apologize as I say, uh, half my equipment's missing today. Uh, there was a tidy up, and I, uh, uh, for some reason, I can't hear a, a word you're saying. Try again. Say hello. Hi. Can hello. you hear me now? I do hear you now. Uh, lovely to see you. Uh, let's get you full screen there. Yes. Uh, how is that pronounced? Uh, Tricia, what is, you, what is her name pronounced? You're right. It's Guschelbauer. She'll Go power. Thanks later. very much. Well, we'll have Lynn uh, a bit later on, and it's lovely to see you. Uh, yeah. And uh, is, are you actually hearing me from now? Because I'm sort of on one piston here. 
Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, great. You. Okay. Yeah. Great. I'll I'll talk to you very soon. All right. Oh. All right. Okay, and uh, and we've got an introduction to the upcoming Fort Loss Sunday sessions uh, that's going to lead up to Sawan. So I think it's time to say hello to uh, who is here. Uh, Kimberly, uh, good morning to you, Kimberly. Uh, Donna's here uh, uh, from New Mexico. And uh, Joanne is here. Uh, nice to see you from Donegal of Organic Gardens. Uh, you, she was featured on a couple of weeks ago on the Sunday session where we had that lovely video, which some of you enjoyed. So here we go. Um, now, Apple really, uh, if I can get to my stuff here, Apple uh, to me is very much uh, the tree of life. And uh, it's, it's portrayed sometimes as the tree of life. And there's this and other stories I'm going to be mentioning that's actually from my uh, book here. Uh, some of you have already got this. This is the bathing in the phase breath. And the Idriscal, uh, or Yggdrasil, the origin of the tree of life. People understand that uh, maybe as the creation of the universe, the origin of humanity, or the divine gifts of nourishment. Now, Norse tales say the ash is the tree, it's an ash tree. Celtic, tray, uh, Celtic tales are saying that it's the oak. And some say that other trees uh, are really the tree of life. But there are several traditions, Greece, Eastern Europe, and also out into the Middle East, that suggest that the apple uh, is of the tree of life. Now, there we go. Uh, that's a bit further on anyway. The entry point, you know, the is I was trying to find, uh, I had some lovely pictures because I love the tradition of this. The idea of the tree going down into a pool and the tree is fed by the pool. And to me, that's the tree of life because when, when you go to the spring wells, the holy wells, as we've talked before in other Sunday sessions, how it's as if life comes up through them. And around the world, from the natural springs, it's where the fae, where the nymphs, where the fairies, uh, where the life comes up from underground and the little people spread the life. Even the rabbits, the hares, even creatures coming out. And this is the entry point. And I love that, the whole thing of the water going up through the trees. And a lot of these folklore things that we do on the Sunday sessions it goes into that. We're certainly familiar with the uh, the rag trees, the cutie trees, and the, the holy wells, we may call these the wishing trees. And uh, there's, I find that the wishes of those people tend to sort of go to them with wishes of desires. Uh, and they, they feel a need to make a, a gift of something, but sadly, often that gift is metal. And they nail it to the trees. And there's quite a debate of whether the nails and the copper kill the trees. In fact, uh, I was reading up a couple of days ago, some people seem to think it helps. But I just don't like uh, it myself. I don't know what you feel about that. It always feels it's an abuse that it's, you're kind of a guest there. What's the purpose of putting the nail in and the coin? But certainly leave a gift of some form. Um, because as well as the wishing for our own desires, is wishing for healing, prayers for healing. Uh, people leave their bridges crosses. They put their prayers in the bridges crosses and they leave those by the trees and by these sacred wells. Now, there was a tradition, and certainly it was abundant when I was a child, that sometimes... People hung apples at this time of year. They would hang apples with their prayers, uh, with their wishes even. And sometimes they would bite into the apple because I don't know if you have, like me, I always find that every time I bite into an apple, and unfortunately I didn't bring the apples around me because of the tech issues. That's a huge embarrassment. But to bite into an apple and that spray that comes out, 
suddenly I find myself for a moment in the sort of a vortex uh, on another world or entering into another world. And that is the time for the wishes, for the vision. And I, I suppose a kind of premonition of the present, the prophecy of the present. And, I, and that's what I love about apples. And that's what I feel is um, very special uh, to me. And so people hang the apples. They hang the coins. Sometimes they hang the coins with the apples. Now, where else have you ever seen, quite frequently, at least once a year, where have you seen apples and coins hanging from a tree? There's a fairy on the top. And the apples, unfortunately, tend to be replaced with baubles and the coins made of chocolate. So did Adam eat an apple? That's a question we tend to have. I got a bit of an at Adam. There he is being offered an apple. Uh, and the Garden of Eden story uh, is told by a few religions. But today we assume that forbidden fruit of temptation, of sin, some would say, uh, was of an apple. But really, that's something that came in with the... Um, it's never in the Bible. There's nothing in the Bible about uh, the apple. This is something that seems to have been brought in by the 16th century Renaissance painters and the sculptors. And they were inspired by the apple trees of the Greek mythology in the Garden of Hera. Now, um, they have nude women uh, that hold an apple. That's a popular subject with the Renaissance painters and the sculptors. But in sacred apples, they're picked and stolen from the Garden of Hera. And so what happens then, it's a bit like the Adam and Eve story. Unconditional love is replaced by a desire for temptation, possession, and greed. Excuse me, I'm getting a dry mouth here. So that's, I think, some of the purpose when you approach the apple, when you approach the rag tree, the clouty tree, the wishing tree, by the will treat it as a place not of desire, but as a place of sharing and, and a kind of a surrender uh, rather than of temptation. So uh, it was, I could possibly do a whole performance of love stories from apples. I'm going to move on from here. But uh, there are various stories that are related to cider what happens uh there's going to be festivals we're going to be talking about the apple festivals coming up and that these apple festivals the most popular one is where the apples go into a machine they're made into apple juice cider is made available some of these uh, the apples and apple juice is going to be cider anyway but i we got a place near here you, i'm going to be talking about avalon uh, quite soon but we have a place here lock Miller. It's by Kiju, just west of Kiju, Mila being a shallow lock. I don't think I've uh, got any pictures of it, but there's a little island uh, that's stuck there. It's the only island that's in it, and it's actually known as Orchard Island. I won't go through the whole story this time, but it is a beautiful story uh, of uh, a woman that was there. Uh, some say uh, Groenia. Uh, but so I think Lazier, uh, they call it St. Lazier's, the Abbey nearby. And there is a Lazier, which we seem to spell L-A-S-I-E-R. And she, her tradition is very similar to Breeder, but she was resident and she was on this island and she was the caretaker and keeper of the apples on the island. But there was um, a bad Finn uh, that he would come, there was his, her father, uh, would uh, have an assembly to bring peace with the local clans, is what it was said. And uh, I can't remember his name offhand, but Finn would come and saw the beauty uh, of Lazier. And he's he was quite accomplished at wooing people. And so he brought to her what was a rose of sweetness. And this rose of sweetness would be planted, and it never wilted. And in this legend, the actual sweetness of this rose, because it is a distant cousin of apple, would keep all the apples pollinated. And another thing, Lazia had bees, and she had plenty of honey. And he showed her how to merge the honey with her apples to create a beautiful nectar drink. 
And with this nectar drink, he encouraged her to drink it. And he would meet up with her from full moon because he would always advise that it's the full moon that you start this. And he would visit her just as the sun was setting and he would leave her straight after the drink. And each night would do this until the full moon. And it was at the full moon when she was full aroused and asked him not to leave. And that was their sort of mating time. And that's one of the stories behind uh, the honeymoon, uh, believe it or not. So really, it's, uh, it's all about stories of temptation. Uh, there is a belief that um, with apples, that if prepared properly, if approached properly, people want immor immortality. I was talking about that bite and that spray and that sense of timelessness. Uh, that sense that everything has stopped, but everything is there. as a kind of moment of immortality. And uh, we surrender our curiosity, though. Um, what, what do we do? We want more of it, with, and we go into temptations. And it's temptations that lead us into curiosity. The curiosity, unfortunately, leads us to pain, to greed, to sorrow. And really, this is all about learning how to be human. Uh, there's a lot of these stories uh, about apples that inspire our imagination. And we give, how many of you took apples as a gift to teachers? You know what's behind that? And it's really, I suppose, to do um, with the teacher's knowledge and wisdom. And it's really originally as a thank you for that wisdom. Anyway, I've sort of muttered on uh, long enough for that. I'm going to have our first feature here. And we got uh, this lovely poem here uh, by uh, Shanda Nichols again that she has related to the apples. So I'm going to bring uh, Chanda up now, and uh, I'm sure you will enjoy it. Let's go. Good day. Um, it's a bit of a windy day here. Um, we are getting the winds from the hurricane down south, but um, with that, it did bring some pleasantly cool weather, so I'm quite thankful for that. Um, but today, I'd like to share with you my painting and my poem inspired by the apple. Um, and so I guess first I'll start with my painting. Uh, I do hope you can see that well. Um, it's just a nice autumnal scene with an apple tree and some colorful trees in the background, a nice serene blue lake. Um, and these are some of the colors that I think of when I think of an apple and I think of the, the fall time. And speaking of colors, um, of course, as you can see, the leaves have yet to start changing here. But I did see a, a plant that I'm most fond of that was starting to bloom. Um, so this is goldenrod and um, the, the flowers are just now budding. They're not quite blooming yet. But this is one of my favorite fall time plants. And um, in the fields, especially, it starts blooming these rich golden colored flowers and they're absolutely beautiful and I just love to see them in the wind and uh, oftentimes I'll harvest a bit and uh, boil them down to make a beautiful yellow dye which I actually used uh, to make that painting I showed you. Um, so that's the golden rod and uh, so with all these colors in mind uh, of course there's far more than what the mind sees when I think of fall and so I wrote a poem to accompany my painting and um, a golden rod here so I hope you enjoy. Strum the harp for magic sleep, away to the land of fairy dream, carry gently upon my word the sweetest music thou hast ever heard. And before thy eyes a woodland dream of sparkling wells and oaks serene, where through the wild one starts to dance, stern and love these countenance. The harp strings woven of ivy vine, the gentle curve of roots intertwined, the drum doth sound from the heart of deer, the low drone of the owl near. The muted beauty of his plumes, the sweet song of the thrush resumes, entwined with chiming of the wren and hollow hums of an autumn wind. And though the leaves are colors warm, the red fruits of the rowan swarm amidst the budding apple trees with crimson fruits and flowers pink. Here the holly takes his crown of mistletoe from the oaken bough, and before him bow the birch and yew, the ash and alder and hawthorn too. Behold the sights, behold the sound of music weaving all around, in a painting of colors gay, and through the wildwood gold you stray. Crunch of apples, sweet and cool, the rich wisdom of the spring you pull, the hazel and dine upon its fruit, sitting by the earthen womb. 
or otherworldly the Feyland seems, the soft grass pulls you gently down to sleep, cradled in moss between the roots, heed to the lulling of the you. With spirit at peace and heart fulfilled, arise and walk to the golden hill, wherein the sun doth set at eve, casting copper to the rusted leaves. And bid farewell to Tir Nanad, to the colors and to the song, to the trees that fed thy soul, to the wells that made thy heart whole. Gently tread through the ring of stone, and mind my words to return ye home. And should thou search for peace again, return to that land <laughs> and hearken. Strum the harp for magic sleep, away to the land of fairy dream. Carry gently upon my word, the sweetest music thou hast ever heard. So thank you, I hope you enjoyed. Um, and I hope that the background noise was not too bad. Um, alas, our arboretum is still closed for COVID. So um, I'm in the woodland behind my um, residential area. So uh, might have been a few uh, distracting noises go by, but I hope the songs of the wind and the trees were able to join me and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Ah, thank you there. Thank you, Chandler. Uh, thank you so much. Um, let's get myself back onto the... Hello. Uh, oh, we, I made a real mess of that because you didn't see Chandler, did you? Did, did you actually hear her? You, uh, you heard her fine. Uh, now, I've, I'm really making a cock up today, and I? What is going on with myself? You can... I'm sorry about this today. I really am uh, uh, going through the tech issues. There we go. Right, let's get with this again. Please use your comments. Would you like to see Chandler again? I'm so, as I say, I was really running around uh, trying to find the parts that were to make this central. So I really sort of tied knots uh, to get together. Uh, you heard her, didn't see you. That's what he thought. Um, because I'm, I need to be an octopus today. Uh, but I think I might play Chandler a bit later on. So I'll carry on a bit because we're talking about uh, Avalon. I did say in the listing that we would talk uh, about Avalon. And people are familiar with Avalon in Somerset. It's well known uh, for the Glastonbury tour. And I do have uh, some Glastonbury tours features here there you go and that's what i've been using as the logo and uh it's known as a place uh, for the divinity for joy a place for apples there's the apple trees that were there and that seems to come from the uh, welsh word apple and how apple got to wales that's quite a lovely story in itself but i'll skip on that one but it is uh related to a germanic and saxon world called apple and uh, had a lovely experience uh, up there in northeast uh, Germany a few years ago, meeting with people where that word seems to came from, fascinating time. But there is a temptation to move into the Arthur and Merlin stories when we talk about uh, Avalon, isn't there? Uh, I've got a personal Avalon uh, reference that I'm excited about that I'm going to share to you later. Uh, but uh, an apple a day, inspiring a bar to play. That's one that uh, I love. And in the uh, folklore story of the creation of Avalon, it's very similar to Doida's Stolen Cauldron uh, that created that um, that island uh, in Mila. It's actually said that the sons of Turin, they stole uh, Doida or Dagda's cauldron and they were running with it. And of course, this is a, a, a cauldron from the Lunar Sir. It's from the harvest and it and when people eat from it, it just continually fills up. It fills up and it keeps people hungry. And these sons of Turin wanted this valuable possession. And they were running with it because it was filling up. And it was so heavy, very heavy. And Dagda was catching them up. And they didn't want the consequences of him catching them. So he th they threw the pot into the mealer. And from this pot up came this orchard island. And that's why it was once upon a time very fertile with its apple trees and uh, uh, with its flowers and the flowers and the pollen and the honey 
and the bees. So that's the background to that. Well, uh, as far as Avalon goes, then we actually have the story with Avalon, uh, that uh, hill, let's put it into the dreamscape here, uh, that it was a place, it was Braun, similar problem. Uh, Braun's own urn was stolen from Wales, and there's a whole incredible e epic, it's almost like the torn uh, in Ireland, of him chasing after it, and there it was thrown into the lake uh, in there, uh, in Somerset now, and it became Avalon and a place of divine apples. And uh, in folklore, it said that the first apple that was eaten, it symbolized us becoming humans, I was saying, where suddenly the desire, temptation, and uh, it filled us with the uh, human motions. And I've discussed in past Sunday sessions where I've mentioned the strains of the bard, uh, the strains being of sorrow, uh, joy, and the dreaming. And this is the whole circle I think of our experience and our creations and how we live. And of course, Avalon for many is symbolic of the dreaming. And folklore tells of the inside of the apple being a conduit between our world and the other world. And including this is, I talked about the visions of when we go into that crisp apple. I keep repeating that, but I just absolutely uh, love that this visionary world of uh, revelations. So is Avalon a place where the spirit within apples takes us to? Some of you might agree with that. And they say the spirit is strongest around uh, uh, Sawan time. Um, uh, Sawan, I, as a child, I was told, and I think it's still told your children now, if you take an apple to bed and put it under a pillow, especially at Halloween, it will protect you from the restless spirits that are wandering around. It will protect you from nightmares and uh, all these awkward things, these nasty things entering our dreams through having an apple under the bed, under our pillow. We have peaceful dreams. It can protect us from all troublesome spirits at any time. And the one thing I love that was taught to me is the trinity of colors, uh, the green there, the color of our birth and our infancy, the yellow for us maturing like through the summer, like the sun across the sky, and the red for sunset, our harvesting, and uh, our own personal sunsets. Anyway, let's see what, uh, how you're doing here. Uh, you're more tech savvy than you think. I don't. Kimberly, I am going through. <laughs> I wish that I was an octopus. I wish I was, there was two of me. I'm... Um, I'm struggling with this one, so apologies. And I hope you're getting it clear because the upload was not very good because I couldn't get onto the Ethernet, if anybody understands that. I'm outside on the wireless, so let's hope we're getting through on this. Anyway, I'm going to go on to a real novel thing now. And this, um, and it didn't help that I had a bit of a coughing fit. Oh, I shouldn't complain. I'm, it's a lovely sunny day. It's the last one of our beautiful Irish sunny days and uh i i'm absolutely loving it and i uh, i hope you you're not taken away too much from the sun of course you can watch this uh, later anyway i got this lovely uh, contribution here and it's uh i put it out to people what happens when you bite into the apple what's that experience write it down paint it draw it get your children to do the same Unfortunately, there was there's been some contributions to that. So I'm going to bring the first contribution up uh, of this, and this is uh, from Florine Begin. And I, there we are. And I think it's where the brother they got the ladder, and uh, there they go. They're heading towards the apple tree here, and uh, they get the ladder up under the tree, and uh, there we go. They're uh, they're kind of uh, up there with the harvest. They're on the way. And then along comes Florin, and she starts uh, drawing about it. She bits into one of the apples that they harvested here. And there we have the drawing there uh, after biting the apple. I think uh, she's 10, 11 years old. Uh, so that was her apple experience. Now, uh, 
I, 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 just, I hope you're loving it. I just love these. I've got another one from children. I've got one from a bunch of children coming up uh, very soon. But meanwhile, I'm going to move on. And uh, this is almost a little bit of my own uh, head thing. This is actually, let's get that uh, again. Don't want to do like I did before. Because uh, one of the things that's not working, uh, funnily enough, is mouse. I'm using a finger here. So that's a, that's the reason that I'm not clearing the screen as uh, much as because uh, the mouse situation is not working very well. Anyway, this is going to show off, and uh, this is actually a bit of me. Um, I've got a thing in the if you some of you have got this, the bathing in the face breath. Half of that book is the almost tale of the trees, and in there there's Quirt the Apple. Normally, I have uh, Claire Roach, who has beautiful music with it, but uh, unfortunately, I couldn't coordinate with her for that. So here's a bit of me doing that. And you know, uh, the within every apple there lies something waiting to surprise. Now, instead of cutting down, slice through and watch a star appear for you. At harvest time, each day on my ladder, I reach closer towards the sky, picking apples, filling barrels, for mead, for cider, and of course, to make apple pie. But I am done with the apple picking for now. Time for winter sleep that no longer nights allow. The scent of the apples calms me and calls me. What will my dreaming allow me to be? In that twilight, before sleep, I can see apples appear and disappear, every one with perfect skin. Aye, this was the great harvest we all desired, to nourish us through the winter, but oh, I'm now tired. But there are voices singing, apples, apples, look, here's our treat, big and small, and they're all good to eat. One side red, the other side green. Russets and coxes all washed clean. But where are the crab apples? Well, they're still out in the wood. Bitter for the big folk, but for us they're quite good. So come all ye, let's gather them up, make jelly with honey and mead for us to sup. And from that mead we'll reveal stories. Of darkness to light, monsters who became angels to guide us through the light. Night. A poet once visited, told us of his longing, seeking for the dream, his desire for courting. Though I am old with wandering through hollow lands and hilly lands, I will find out where she has gone, and kiss her lips and take her hands. We walked with him among the long dappled grass, and plucked till time and times are done those silver apples of the moon and the golden apples of the sun. And through a moment's smile, he shared more wisdom with us for a while. Peering above his spectacle steamed as we giggled, burped and beamed. Mm -hmm. But there is that tree with the leaves so green and here are the apples that <coughs> hang in between. And if I picked these two apples, do you know what I would do? I would shine them up and I'll give one to you and one to you. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> well that's my little bit. And the one thing there, that was a bit of a celebration of apples. And one of the uh, enjoyable celebrations that I get into, some more children here, is wassailing. And uh, I absolutely adore wassailing. And the whole principle of it is blessing your apple trees uh, each winter. This is done at different times. Some people in some regions do it someone, some do it midwinter, some do it uh, in early January. But there was a lovely experience, I think it was about six years ago, uh, where I was invited to do a whole apple presentation up in northeast Germany. I haven't got a clue where we were. It was in some hills. And uh, the driver took us uh, from Frankfurt Airport. He was using a sat-nav, and we got to where we were supposed to be getting off. And uh, he was uh, confused. And where we were was outside an apple 
kind of distribution point. And it was surrounded by apples and orchards. And it was phenomenal. And as I got to know the people, it was evident that this was the place that was the origin of the wassailing tradition. Yet the people in the area had lost it. So I ended up spending that weekend teaching them the wassailing tradition. And they translated it into Germany, the, uh, into German. They translated it into their songs. And they started singing it in German. And so I thought <laughs> this was uh, quite incredible, taking a Saxon tradition back to a Saxon area. And it was all new. And this was surrounded uh, by the apples. Absolutely fascinating. I'm not going to bother you with you with the um, the uh, German translation. But there's usually three verses. And the one thing you do, you put... Uh, uh, bread uh, soaked with cinnamon, with uh, spices. You put that into the branches of the trees, and uh, that's what the girl has got there. And then the little pot there, you actually pour some cider for the roots to go down to the roots of the apple tree. So it's, uh, it's bless the tree, bless the roots. And then the third verse is everybody is holding hands, which unfortunately you can't do right now, and it's a bit of a circle dance and you bless each other. Absolutely beautiful. Now, uh, I definitely uh, have to move on uh, here and because we're gonna, this is going to be a week of Apple festivals. Uh, certainly in Leitrim, there's uh, festivals I'm going to introduce you to on Saturday and on Sunday. But the big one is the Clonmel uh, Festival that's coming up. And uh, that's, uh, that is the poster. And uh, it's lovely that we have the two founders of the Clonmel Apple Fest who've been patiently waiting in the background. So let's bring them uh, aboard now. Uh, and we have Lynn and uh, we have, there we have uh, uh, Theresa. And now, Theresa. oh goodness me, I, I'm uh, three people and I've told that we can <laughs> wobble this around uh, by the, uh, the StreamYard people. Let's see, oh look, there I go. No, I don't. Anyway, let's try and get you up in a much nicer uh, thing. So, hello, everybody. Uh, let's see if I can get you uh, in voice here. Hello. Hi. Uh, Lynn. Hello. 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 Uh, lovely that I managed to get you. It's a long time since I've had two guests. And uh, uh, the programming on StreamYard has changed since. So, uh, I'm they say you can, oh, look, yes, I can wobble you around. There you go. Um, so I'm nice going to take to myself. Today. Pardon? It's really Hello? nice to be with you today. Such a oh, I, uh, today. yes. So, so please, uh, Lynn and uh, Theresa, uh, introduce you. So, I am um, Lynn Mather, and I'm out here uh, in Clonmel, which is the Valley of Honey. So, uh, I came down here to the River Shore and to one of the sites that we have some really young apple trees that we started planting here as part of the Apple Festival. So just to show you, we're on the River Shore and uh, we are also on what is the Clonmel Blue Way. So I'm just going to show you a bit of it. And it's, this is the start of the Blue Way. So I don't know if you can see too well. So not that I want to show you all the public people, but it's really well used on a sunny day like today. Um, so that's where I am. And uh, maybe, Teresa, you can tell people why we started the Apple Festival. Well, I suspect we started the Apple Fest because nobody else did, <laughs> ironically. Um, it, it occurred to me, hi everybody, um, myself and Lynn have been living in the area for up to 20 years and uh, whenever you go around Ireland talking about Clomel, you know, say, oh yeah, yeah, Bulmers, uh, orchards, apples. And, you know, it's like there is a very strong connotation of Clomel and apples and then Clomel as such is actually the Anglic Anglicization of Clunmala, which means the meadow of the honey of honey. So 
honey and apples it's uh, it's just such a, a nice beautiful combination and uh so three four years three years ago we did a project researching you know stories around uh orchards and apples and bulmers and the whole history of, of of orchards in the area and we uh you we discovered an 1860 map of Clarmel and realized that pretty much every single car park in the town used to be an orchard so that was quite a, a shocking revelation and uh, I mean, there is quite a, a preponderance of cars in the town, which is, we find problematic, others don't, you know, so you have to live with, with the limitations of not everybody having the same opinions. But I think everybody does feel very strongly about Bulmers and um, especially at this time of year, um, the, the apples used to come into the town. You see, the, the, the upper press itself, where they were crushing the apples, was right in the town center, right by the river, actually. And they were using the water from the river to um, actually wash the apples. And uh, so at some point, they had announced that Bulmers was going to do a visitor center, which is in the pipelines. And... I just posted a Facebook, uh, I just put a post up on this page, Clownmel Memories, around, you know, do people remember the smell of the apples in the town? And I think 500 people responded and put up posts, you know, telling all kinds of stories how, you know, as kids they used to see there would have been like these huge heaps of apples. I mean, I saw this, you know, they were there till about 15 years ago. This was still practice whereby all the Bramley apples from all over Ireland would be brought down to the Keys and, uh, and unloaded in this big yard and, and then put to the apple press there. And the smell was just wonderful, you know. And um, so I suppose that gave me the idea with Lynn, you know, that maybe we should, you know, research those stories and stories about Bulmers because pretty much, you know, every young man or woman in the town would have at some point uh, done some work, either harvesting uh, apples or helping out with the crushing or helping out with teas and lunches and such. So, um, so we spent the whole summer looking, uh, you know, talking to people, visiting people. We did made a small film with uh, a friend of ours who's, who came along at times. We had another uh, collaborator uh, reenact some stories. Uh, there was this very famous one about T Dr. Croak, uh, no, Dr. Callahan, who I think he was a, an athlete actually and, and won medals for Ireland. And he was a doctor um, who had this beautiful, uh, this big house with an orchard and a big wall. And I think the big thing in Clarmel was the dunding. People would go, it was a challenge amongst kids and probably teenagers, you know, sort of that 10 to 15 year old type who, who liked to do mischief. And the big thing was to, to you know, to go and uh, climb over the wall and get apples without being caught. And Dr. O'Callaghan apparently was reputed for, you know, uh, going out irate and shouting and he had a gun and he would actually uh, you know, use it. I mean, not to shoot at anybody, but, you know, to make noise and scare the kids. But the, the, the thing was obviously the, the, the fun and the, the challenge of, of succeeding without being caught or grabbed that was, was delightful for many. And uh, I think that practice was quite common up until not so long ago, because I, we have a friend who's in his 40s, and he used to do that uh, in the middle of the town. The, um, uh, again, where now there is a car park, he, he used to go and climb over the wall there. So it's, uh, it's still quite, um, it's very much in living memory. Uh, so it would be lovely to, <laughs> to reenact this, except there isn't many... Uh, walls, you know, places with walls to climb at this stage. However, it's interesting, uh, John, that you were talking about the wassailing because I witnessed the wassailing ceremony in Kent earlier this year, in January, and 
while I, I had heard about it, because Lynn, you see, as part of this project, Lynn did a lot of research as well. She's very good at that. And she had come up with the vaseline, which I had never heard about. But I'm sure, yeah, there are various traditions all over the world about this. And uh, seeing it reenacting was quite interesting. And it was beautiful. The people were all given torches. And there must have been, you know, 500 people at this and lots of torches. Uh, and um, we just walked down into these old charts and it was really quite lovely. Uh, and and then, well, and there was this man who was sort of a shaman type who who uh, was doing sort of imprecations uh, and and he poured the cider on the roots and yeah, he probably made some donations as well. I mean, we were a bit far away, so there was only, we could only catch so much of it. But the whole thing was lovely, as, you know, to, to be doing something like that in the middle of the winter. So I'd love to try to do something yeah. like that maybe next January, maybe all yeah. around St. Bridget's Day, well, which gather, is the time um, when... Sorry? Yeah, that, thanks for that. As far as the uh, whistling goes, you're right in Kent. January, it seems as you go west, it gets earlier. Uh, once you get into Sussex, you get towards the midwinter. As you start getting uh -huh. into Somerset, if you, when you get into Worcestershire and Herefordshire, it starts getting more towards the Sowan. And it did creep over into Wexford, and Waterford, and that seems to be oh, the really? earliest. Now, uh, oh, I'm doing for all that. Where was you, with your name? Where was the origin? Which, uh, where have you actually come from? From Ireland or your family? Where did they come from? Oh, uh, who's who's whose family? Uh, yeah, yours, Teresa. Oh, well, my family. Uh, my husband is from Dublin, if you must know. But uh, I live in Tipperary. I live in Tipperary on the foothills of Schlievenamon, and I'm I'm still trying very hard to be adopted here. I'm just um, uh, wondering uh, if you had a Germanic connection, like I was saying when I went to Germany, and suddenly introducing the wassailing. So I'm wondering if you actually had some of that tradition and brought it in, or whether that's an instinct that came into Ireland that you just continued. Well, I suppose I grew up in France and, and and would have gone to Austria a good bit as a kid as well because I'd have family there. And in Austria, they would, do, they would do fashing, which is of, um, for Mardi Gras. Or, and um, that's quite... And, and that's a, a winter festival, so that's quite interesting. You know how Irish people always giving out about the terrible weather but you know in so many other countries they do festivities in the winter time um, because that's the time uh, for pancake tuesday mardi gras would be pancake tuesday uh where people celebrate the fact that you know for the next six weeks um what is it lent is it the beginning or the end of lent i'm always confused i think it's the beginning of lent yeah so basically they all go mad on the tuesday just um, Ash Wednesday and you know because then they have to behave themselves for six weeks so and there probably are you know rem remnants of this in Ireland but we haven't yet investigated those so that certainly maybe you gave us an idea there that we ought to between the sailing and the the the, 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 the uh, what do you call it Mardi Gras uh, the Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> we so uh, hi. I don't know what's happened to the sound there. Did I put it off? I was just walking amongst the apple trees that we are planted, the Bramleys and the crab apples. And um, this Bramley here still has a a blossom flowering. Quite funny. So, not sure where everybody else went now. And I'm gonna, yeah. gonna just just asking people if they want some of our Apple Festival brochures that are walking along here. So it's uh, that's coming up next week. So that's we're having a just the festival that time of year because that is um. When the apples are ripe, or when they mostly ripen and the cider is um, flowing, so we 
good friends with um, quite a few apple farmers and cider makers around here. Contrast at the apple farm near Care and Clonmel, between Clonmel and Care. There's a beautiful apple farm there that you can go camp at even. And then we have a long way cider, long ways, a long way from Tipperary, long ways. Uh, my friend James O'Donoghue, that's on the other side of Clonmel towards Carrick on Shure. So uh, we're planting, uh, this is quite a neat little orchard that we started to plant here um, of apple trees. And we have location, we've got five other sites that we're trying to replant orchards, uh, apples, and uh, maybe other edibles in the future. And um, the others are a bit wilder than over here, but anyway, it's the public realm. And um, so we're very much working with within the public realm so people can eat their own apples. Well, I have to leave it there. Uh, it was lovely uh, to get a bit of you, uh, uh, Lynn and Theresa. And a reminder, I'll bring this up again, the Clonmel uh, Apple Fest. Uh, and that should give you the details. Look it up. I did, sorry, I haven't got the banner of the website, which I'm sure if you do a Google for Clonmel yeah, Apple it's Fest, just, like I did, it's just, you'll find it. It's just, it, it's just clonmel.ie, uh, clonmelapplefest.ie. And we also have a Facebook page, a Twitter page, and an Instagram page, so you can't right. miss us. Sir. Right, great. Well, thanks very much. I've got to move on there because we've almost yeah, got yeah. time here. Great. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. I'd thank like to hear much, more John. sometime. And thank you so much for that. Thank you. Right. Uh, that was uh, two very enthusiastic people. I wish we could have had a whole show on them or them do a whole show. But uh, that's uh, on, as I say, 25th uh, of the 27th. Then next Saturday in our area, there's, um, oh, there's uh, Saturday here is lovely. Uh, that's uh, Drum Hair. They've got a little apple do uh, in the village there. And, of course, they're juicing up and they're making the uh, cider, uh, the apple juice there. And then the annual uh, apple day uh, up there in uh, the organic center on the border uh, by Loch Melvin. Um, they've got theirs up and running. And, of course, they they got to adapt to all this COVID stuff. But they've, they've got a program on. And, of course, they have their lovely red, a natural red local apples and they give a display of the local apples from Leitrim and from uh, Fermanagh and round about and they have tours of their orchards and there's some very very ancient apples amongst that it's well worth it if you can go to their apple day and there's cider makers and it's a lovely introduction uh, deduction to the apples of this area which people don't realize that we have uh, an incredible apple tradition and that's some of the apple juice from theirs and there's a wee map there to show you uh where they are now i'm going to do just uh one more feature and i was saying i was going back to the uh avalon uh thing here and uh it's very topical because i've been uh, even jumping around uh, with my program here but i was saying that uh, we had uh I was doing a thing. Let's see if I can. Uh, I got to remove that picture now. I've lost him. There we go. I was saying that I put an application out, and uh, this is going to be an indulgence and uh, for children and for the adults to actually present their bite into an apple and what comes from that. And uh, my own uh, over in Scotland, my own family decided to take part on it, and so. I'm going to make an indulgement, and there's Ayla, which interestingly, Ayla actually means honey, and she she's wonderful enjoying. I hope you can actually see this, uh, a lovely interpretation uh, of her, uh, what came to her with the apple. It was the whole vision uh, of dreams, and I just this is typical Ayla imagination, incredible. And then uh, Ayla has got two twin brothers. And uh, there was a tree planted in their honor because they were actually born just at the end of apple season. So this is up actually in, in Forres, uh, Findhorn Village. 
and they uh, it was a lovely apple ceremony that we actually had there, a tree planting ceremony. There is a video, but it's very personal, so I'm not going to show you that. But uh, out of uh, the twins, uh, Aaron, well, he decided to write something. And I love this. I, I think they're four years, just coming up four years old now, and there's no sort of controlled drawing. It's total expression. So there's Aaron with his... Uh, that's his what came to him when he both went into an apple. Look, there's the green, there's the red. Uh, wonderful expression. And his twin brother Sebastian, he got into the job as well. And there was his uh, apple interpretation. And uh, here are their parents, uh, uh, Holly. And believe it or not, I wonder if you can guess uh, the, his wife's name. His wife is Avalon. <laughs> it would have to be. So, of course, Avalon, uh, she got into it. She bit into an apple, and this is what she came up with. There we are, the two seeds of the twins uh, are about to be born in apple season time, and uh, that was her portrayal. And I think that's absolutely magnificent. And if you're not quite sure what uh, all that's about, here's the inside of an apple. There you go. That's, uh, that was a pregnant Avalon. How 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 close is that symbolism? I think that's absolutely remarkable. Now, as they were presenting all that, one of my other sons, uh, their uncle Sky, came to visit. So of course he had to get into the act, and he did one. Now with Sky, uh, he he works with uh, ever since he was uh, I don't know probably nine years old. He has worked endlessly with Apple computers. Uh, I wouldn't, I'm surprised he doesn't have an Apple One actually. But today, his work is mainly helping people uh, with solutions with Apple, especially with databasing, uh, with graphic uh, presentations. And he works a lot with FileMaster. So, of course, uh, this uh, he bites an apple. What does he come up with? Uh, there we go. <laughs> so I hope you didn't mind uh, uh, that uh, we indulgence there. And, uh, yeah, that is uh, the family and the apple and the twins uh, coming on the family. Now, there should be... Uh, I've, I was mentioning earlier about Denise and her apple pie, and this was her contribution here. Uh, the five seasons of an apple tree, which is wonderful. And she just sent me the picture of the apple pie, which I couldn't uh, sweep in at the moment. And she had a poem, I think, on the way. But since we couldn't do it, I'm going to actually indulge with uh, one of her poems right here, uh, if I can... A poem on... There we go. It's to this do with the mother her. as a mother earth. You hum me into being. You hum me into being, enveloped by the soft ground, nurtured in the soil, resting like a fetus, awaiting sustenance, mothering energy, full to the brim, always forgiving, balancing the chaos, solid fuel for all life. Beauty and the beast as one, the giver and the taker. You hum me into being. You correct me when I falter. You trip me when I'm too sure-footed. In the silence, I hear your heartbeat. I ride with you the cycles of the cosmos, teaching me grace and dignity. May I clean your wounds as you do mine. You fill up my senses with all the gifts that you give. You hum me into being.
That was uh, Claire, which you might not have known because I was obviously doing a bit of miming before that. I only just realized whilst Claire was performing that I had mic issues. And what I was saying when Claire is performing uh, one of her live versions of the Song of the Wandering Angus was actually right by Loch Mila, though you didn't see the lake there, the loch there. And it was with a group of people. We'd been for a walk up to a uh, cork can there that has wonderful stories connected to the Orchard Island. Anyway, I think what I, I haven't had a chat to see how you were doing. I'm glad uh, you're thinking it's wonderful because I'm absolutely, as I say, I'm struggling here because uh, I'm uh, 
yeah you've said no, no sound some of you yes uh i hope to have all the gear up uh with me to uh i'm next week i'm actually redoing uh the studio because of we're not going to have lovely days like this where i can broadcast outside for much longer so the studio has got to be uh put in proper order and hopefully a bag of tricks that sort of went missing through another tidy up which was needed today uh will be back with us but uh, i hope that you've had uh, fun uh, with this let's uh, tell you what's um what's uh, coming up uh there's all these lovely beautifuls and wonderful and patricia knows well because we performed outside uh, Patricia's over there in California by this amazing, uh, very, very old, hundreds of years old oak tree. Um, Florian, yes, I, I'm glad you enjoyed it. hope you enjoyed it. I managed to get your presentation out there. Okay. Uh, and Lynn, uh, thank you uh, for being here. So uh, let's uh, let you inside to what uh, is happening, uh, coming up. Now, next week is one of the Orm series. It's going to be the, this is the 27th, the Orm, the Stone Stories. As you know, earlier this year, I tried to cram all of Orm into one session, impossible, and split it up. So we're going into the, some lovely stories of how these Orm stones came about, origins, how the Orm got onto it, why we haven't got a clue what half of them are saying, and in this case, why on earth is there four stones actually collected together uh i i have a nickname for them if you remember it's pissing stones and i'll, I'll explain that to you uh, as we uh, get on to that and then on the 4th of october uh we'll have some great guests on and uh i will have some uh, herbalists go through this because on the 4th of october it's uh, erin's uh, stories her cauldron and her folklore so i think a lot of you will be excited about that and then leading up to the uh there's going to be a few more folklore sessions leading up to so on i don't think we're going to be able to do the lighted labyrinth i've got to think about that because of the covid situation i don't think we could have people around here so i don't know if i'm going to do a virtual light up of the labyrinth and walk you around it i've still got to make decisions any thoughts or feelings about that, uh, do let me know about that. And, that, and so that's really uh, what's coming up. I'm still going to present a bit more just now. Uh, a few more comments have rolled in. Uh, perfect timing for the dog. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, well, obviously, I put dog up of that. Uh, thank you for that. Um, and uh, I'm glad you were able to meet up and tune in, uh, Lynn. And, Sorry, it was a bit of a, a ramble uh, today. But anyway, the one thing uh, I will do, and I'll, I'll kind of uh, need to close this off because you've, you've had me for plenty of time. And I would like to uh, say, keep commenting here, especially if you're managing to watch this going live in the archive. So enjoy a safe week full of wonder, inspiration, celebration, and enchantments. Uh, before you go, I am going to actually attempt to play Chandler with some sound and without interference. So until next Sunday, play well. Bye. And here we go. Moving on to uh, Chandler, if I can, if she is still there. And you'll actually see her and do her thing. Uh, yeah, she's there. Here we go. So bye. Starting, Starting to move. Um, so this is Goldenrod, and um, the good day. Um, it's a bit of a windy day here. Um, we are getting the winds from the hurricane down south, but um, with, with that, that, it did bring some pleasantly cool weather, so I'm quite, quite thankful, thankful for that. Um, but today, today I would like to share with you my painting and my poem inspired by the apple. Um, and so, so I guess first I'll start, start with my painting. painting. Uh, I, I do hope, hope you can see that, that well. Um, it's just a nice autumnal scene with an apple tree and some colorful trees in the background, a nice serene blue lake. Um, and these are some of the colors that I think of when I think of an apple and I think of the fall time. And speaking of colors, um, of course, as you can see, the leaves have yet to start changing here, but I did see a, a plant that I'm most fond of that was starting to bloom. Um, so this is goldenrod. And, um, 
the, the the flowers are just not budding they're not quite blooming yet but this, this is one of my favorite of all time plants and um in the field especially it starts blooming these rich golden colored flowers and they're absolutely beautiful and i just love to see them in the wind and uh, oftentimes i'll harvest a bit and uh, boil them down to make a beautiful yellow dye which i actually used uh, to make that painting i showed you um so that's the golden rod and uh, so with all these colors in mind uh, of course there's far more than what the mind sees when i think of fall and so i wrote a poem to accompany my painting um a golden rod here so i hope you enjoy Strum the heart from magic sleep, away to land of fairy dream, carry gently upon my word the sweetest music thou hast ever heard. And before thy eyes a woodland dream, of sparkling wells and oaks serene, where through the wild ones start to dance, stir in love these countenances. The heart strings woven of ivy vine, the gentle curve of roots intertwine, the drum doth sound from the heart of deer, the low drone of the owl near. The muted beauty of his plumes, the sweet song of the thrush resumes, entwined with chiming of the wren and hollow hums of an autumn wind. And though the leaves are colors warm, the red fruit of the rowan swarm amidst the budding apple trees with crimson fruits and flowers pink. Here the holly takes his crown of mistletoe from the oaken bough, and before him bow the birch and yew, the ash and alder and hawthorn too. Behold the sights, behold the sound of music weaving all around, in a painting of colors gay, and through the wildwood gold you stray. Crunch of apples, sweet and cool, the rich wisdom of the spring you pull, the hazel and dine upon its fruit, sitting by the earthen womb. Or otherworldly the fayland seems, the soft grass pulls you gently down to sleep, cradled in moss between the roots, heed to the lulling of the yew. With spirit at peace and heart fulfilled, arise and walk to the golden hill, wherein the sun doth set at eve, casting copper to the rusted leaves. And bid farewell, tear and nod, to the colors and to the song, to the trees that fed thy soul, to the wells that made thy heart whole. Gently tread the ring of stone, and mind my words to return ye home. And should thou search for peace again, return to that land <laughs> and hearken. Strum the harp for magic sleep, away to the land of fairy dream, carry gently upon my word, the sweetest music thou hast ever heard. So thank you, I hope you enjoyed, um, and I hope that the background noise was not too bad. Um, alas, our arboretum is still closed for COVID, so um, I'm in the woodland behind my um, residential area, so uh, might have been a few uh, distracting noises go by, but I hope the songs of the wind and the trees were able to join me and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.